Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I'm going to show in this video how you could take a scan of a patient's existing denture and then be able to separate that out so that you could print the teeth in white, print the base in pink. Now, this is a, a thing that I've, I've preached for a long time. I really think dentists should be offering this service to their patients. If someone comes in with a denture and they lose that, they've really got no recourse. But if you've duplicated that at some point in the past, you could make this denture again and have it ready for them in an hour. And so I think this is a huge peace of mind for patients that they'd be willing to pay for. And also it's a great service on your end to be able to uh, create duplicates, to create backups, all of that kind of stuff. And so um, let's go through the process here. And I think I've kind of figured out a way to streamline this as much as possible. So here we have a denture that was an existing denture that got scanned. And so you can see we've got the internal, the external. Um, also, if you were trying to retread a patient's denture and basically give them the same denture, but with a better fit or maybe a shape change, then you could reline this internally in PVS before you scan it. And that way it's going to have the best possible internal fit. And, you know, you could make the shade whatever you want to when you're printing these teeth. So again, a really valuable thing. So the first thing I need to do is select all of the teeth here because we're going to separate those out into a separate STL. And I'm going to try to show a few uh, tricks. I mean, obviously you could come in here with the select tool and just manually go over all that, but man, that's tedious. So what we can do instead is if you go to edit, you can hit this button that says generate face groups. Now that's a useful thing because we can change the angle threshold. Basically, when you use this tool, it's looking at changes in the contour of this STL mesh. And when it sees a fold or something, it's gonna put a different face group on that. And so we can decrease that angle threshold because right now I see that the majority of these teeth on the lingual is still uh, part of the, the rest of it. So we could maybe decrease the angle threshold a bit. And it looks like these are too smooth of transitions to really separate out well. And so we'll have to do those manually, but the rest of this, I think we can do uh, very easily. Okay, so let's do this. Let's accept this. That's going to paint on those face groups. And now what I'll do is double click this, double click that. And that gives us the majority of this denture. Now you see all of these little exceptions here, right? How could we go back and grab those? Well, one thing that you could do is expand the ring, okay? So you could do that by going to modify, expand ring. I'll do it once this way. Do you see when it does that, how it swallowed up a lot of those little spots? We still have a few more. So we can go again. And I'm counting how many times I'm doing this, okay? Now your, your shortcut on your keyboard is hold down the shift and then hit the greater than. So that's three. And that looks like we've now got all of the little tidbits. Now, what's cool is that we can scale this back down now. And so when you're expanding the ring, basically you're going out one triangle in every direction from wherever the area is selected. So now let's do uh, modify contract ring. And you see what happens here. It scales that back uh, one two and that gets us back to the original three that we did and so now we've got the vast majority of these uh, teeth selected um, if you want to select the teeth instead of the base you could hit i on your keyboard that is invert invert is also found here in modify invert and so now i just need to go up and clean up a little bit all right so let's get the majority of that tooth we need to come in and select these areas Okay, that looks like we've got pretty good selections there. And if there's any areas that you want to erase, like that little crease right there, you just hold your shift key. And then I want to make sure I get any areas of, uh, you know, where it's not fully gotten the tooth. Like right there, that would be a problem. And then it also went a little outside of the bounds on this area. So I'm going to scale that back. But honestly, this is much, much faster than trying to do it by manually selecting everything on the, the model there. Okay, let's get rid of that little spot. And we're pretty much there. Maybe not get so aggressive in that embrasure. 
and then we can smooth this out. Okay, so that's good. We've got that selected. Now, before I separate it out, get rid of that little spot. Um, before I separate that out, I do want to make sure that I have a smooth boundary to it. That's going to be a really important thing. So you can go up here to modify and first optimize the boundary or hit O on your keyboard, which is what I do. I hit the shortcut. And then in that same menu, modify smooth boundary or hit B on your keyboard. When you do that, do you see now that it's uh, made a new outline and it smoothed that out some? Let's accept that. And now with that all selected, you want the teeth all selected here, you can hit edit and then go to separate. All right. So, and actually it looks like I still forgot to get rid of this little bit because that's too much. Let's delete that. And then we can just always uh, double click on the boundary here and select it all again and then hit O for optimize and then B for smooth boundary. Okay, now you see that that's smooth again. So we've got that and we've got this model. Okay. And this is the denture with that now subtracted. So the first thing that I've got to do is I've got to make these teeth into a solid object. And we've also somehow got to create a path of draw. So let's go over how to do that. I'm going to leave that visible because that will be useful in telling me where to extend these teeth to. So let's uh, select the teeth. Let's zoom in really tight. And using the select tool with a super small spot size, I'm gonna click right on the blue boundary of the teeth. Okay, so I've got the entire boundary selected. And with that done, I need to transform it. So that's uh, T on your keyboard, so T for transform. And now let's extend this. Now notice that it extends it all uniformly in one direction, whatever direction you ask it to do. And so in essence, what that does is creates for us a path of draw. So that's going to be a really useful feature to this. You do want it symmetric and you generally do not want it bleeding through the anterior here. So I need to scoot that back just a hair, maybe just a little more there. And you might have an area like this. If it's in the posterior, I'm not gonna get too worked up about that. There's a few ways we could deal with it. But then I do want to look for straight on and make sure that this is extruding in a straight up and down direction. Okay, so that looks good. Let's accept it. Now that is still not a three-dimensional mesh. Obviously it's uh, open on one side. So because we have a good boundary all through this, we can plane cut that and that will close it. But before I do that, I'm gonna use my select tool and double click this entire purple area that it extruded. Um, let's hide this. Now, you probably need to know a little bit about face groups, right? These are face groups, right? That entire area that we had just uh, extended, that is a face group, meaning the software is going to paint it a color and it's gonna see this color if you double click this as a different face group from this. They're all the same STL, but they're different face groups. Okay, so with that selected, go up to deform and smooth because you see the, the rough striations in this. Um, this is going to be a much better path of draw. So let's accept it. And now we're ready to make it into a solid object. So let's go ahead and orient it to where your uh, gingival heights are pretty uniform across the board. And I'm gonna go to edit and plane cut. All right, so that looks pretty good. We can bring that down maybe just a hair. You want to leave a little bit uh, beyond the green of the teeth, green in this instance, because that's all your, your mating surface between the base and the, uh, uh, the teeth. So that's all what's getting bonded together. And so you want to leave at least some of that. And if it looks something like this, where it's trying to discard the half that you're wanting to keep, you just hit this big blue arrow and you can flip that over. So this is the area that's going to get discarded. So we'll hit accept. And now let's turn this base back on. Now that's the problem with it, is that there's still areas where even after we've cut it, it's extruding through the base here. 
So how do we get rid of that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and I'm just going to use my select tool. Pretty big. And I'm just going to paint the internal surface here. Anywhere that I see the base. And then I'll go a little bit beyond that as well. Okay. And just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yep, see how I missed that little spot. So I, I always hit O and then B and just smooth boundaries just because it makes things cleaner. And so now we've selected all of that area where the teeth are going to interface with the base. Okay, and with that done, I'm going to click separate. And this portion, I can pretty much just get rid of that. Okay, so let's delete that. Just hit the trash can in your objects browser. So you have this, okay? And you would imagine that if you could subtract this from the teeth, that's going to remove all of those interferences. The problem is that right now, as you can see from this candy cane striping, this is not a three-dimensional object either. So we've got to turn it into one. And the simplest way to do that is to uh, either extrude or offset it. So if I come in here and double click this, where it's all selected, now I can go to edit, offset, okay? Now, generally I don't have this checked on, but here it's nice because it will immediately turn it into a three-dimensional object without me having to go back and close anything. So click connected there so that it maintains uh, a wall between the shell here that was the original and what it's extruded or offset, I should say. Now, notice here, though, that it offset it inwardly, okay? So I'm going to cancel this. I want to show you something real quick. An STL, at least in Mesh Mixer, is always going to offset in the direction of the mesh, okay? So here, this is the backside of the mesh. So if I extrude this, let's say, one millimeter, then it's going to build up and uh, inward one millimeter from this. I don't really want to do that. I can't have a zero to zero mating surface between the denture base. And so what I'm going to do instead is offset it in a negative direction. So once again, double click this all so that it's selected, edit, offset. You're going to have to let it work through and do its initial one. It's going to default to whatever you last used, which in my case was 0.3. But now I want to go negative one. You could do anywhere from negative 0.8 to negative uh, one and a half even if you wanted. Um, let's just do negative one right here and let's watch as this updates. So see the mesh right now and now it flipped it. So now this is the original interior surface of the denture and it's offset it outward in every direction um, towards the teeth even more so that there's even more impingement into the teeth. Okay, but now we can subtract these two objects. Okay, now just a heads up, when you start doing these offsets and now you're going to do Boolean differences and stuff, a tiny, tiny little area of mesh like that where it's just maybe one portion of one triangle, that's going to cause the software problems. So you got a few ways of dealing with that. And what I would suggest doing is, um, you know, first of all, look at it from the external, make sure that that's good and smooth. Okay, you see that little uh, defect right there? I'm going to just use the select tool, erase and fill, and now that's smooth. And I'm going to look for any other areas. That looks like the only one that's problematic. Okay. So what I'm going to need to do is Boolean subtract the base that's been offset from the teeth. Boolean off or uh, Boolean unions, Boolean differences always work better with a nice uniform mesh. One way that you can get that mesh is to come up here to edit on this base. So we got it selected, edit, make solid. And I'm not terribly worried about the quality of this right now because I'm just using it to create that offset spacer. So a low quality mesh is actually going to be great here because it'll subtract even quicker. So now we're ready to do the Boolean difference. So select the T first. You always select the object you're subtracting from first in your objects browser and then hold control that portion of the base that you need to extrude or uh, subtract. So now let's hit Boolean difference. 
and it's already done. Had we not made that solid, that might have taken three, four minutes to do that function. So I can accept this. And you see a couple little defects, but we're not going to mess with those just yet. Now, by virtue of having done that uh, subtraction, that was a thin one millimeter object, right? So you've still got areas up here above this. We want to get rid of those because those obviously are not going to work. So just grab your select tool, select any portion of the teeth part that you're wanting to keep. And then a quick trick is go up here to modify and tell it expand my selection to everything that's physically connected. So expand to connect it. And now in doing that, you see here that we've selected everything that we want to keep. And the rest of this is just floating out in space. So remember how to invert. You can either go to modify, invert, um, but we want to deselect now the teeth and instead select everything else. So I'm going to hit I on the keyboard. Now that's selected, and I just hit delete on the keyboard. Okay, so now you see the end result. Um, remember, this was that object that we selected. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this border and the portion that we uh, offset. Keep wanting to say extrude, and let's delete that. Remember, this is the original interior mesh of that denture. So do you see how now we've created the entire tooth chain and it's got one millimeter of spacing between it so that when the denture is being printed, you're not going to end up with areas of perforation through the interior of the denture. It's all going to be uh, at least, I would say a millimeter. We're going to have to offset the teeth a little bit too, but it's going to end up in the realm of about 0.7 millimeters thick. That's plenty enough for the printer to print successfully all through here. And also because it is going to be thin, that's better for your bonding process because you'll be able to get in there with your curing light and put it right up against the internal of this pink base. It's only got to cure through a tiny little layer to cure to the composite of the teeth. Okay. I always worry when I'm bonding in these teeth through a thicker 3D print because the resin is only light cured. So if it's not getting light or not enough light, then you've got a weak spot between the bond of your, your two objects. Okay, so at this point, we're done with that surface. I can delete that. I've got these teeth separated out, and these would be now ready to print. You can go ahead and start printing these if you want. What we've got to do now, though, is create the base with the sockets for this teeth chain. And that's very simple. Let's just go and grab the original STL again. So import, append, and this was denture duplicate. All right, you see the teeth match exactly as you can tell from that model appearance. And so if we were to try to subtract this, it would absolutely fail. It's not going to work. It's going to lock up. Okay. Um, so what we got to do instead is we've also got to create some spacer between the denture base and those teeth. Uh, if you've used the blue sky denture module, you know that it probably creates a, an offset space or a cement spacer of about 0.3 millimeters. So I'm going to try to shoot for the same here. And one thing I did notice here before I do that, uh, I drew your attention to this earlier, but we want to get rid of that little area. So if I just select this, uh, the tooth object here, I'm going to hit edit and plain cut. And we can just plain cut off that portion and discard that. And let's look for any other areas that might cause us some problems. The rest of that looks pretty easy. Okay, so we should be good there. So now we're ready to create the base. All right, go ahead and duplicate your tooth chain. So select it, go to edit, duplicate, because that one is finished. We don't want to mess that one up with whatever we're about to do next. So I'm going to just hide it, and now I'm going to work on this duplicate of these. Now what I want to do is I want to take this surface, this entire surface here, uh, remember, if you double click stuff, it's only going to click on that base group. So instead of going here and painting everything, I can just go to modify, expand to connected, or hit select all. So I'll hit expand to connected. With it all selected now, I'm going to go and edit. Once again, offset. Now this time I do not want it connected like I did previously. Okay, so remember it's going to default to your uh, last used offset. So in my case, that's negative one. So you can't even see the offset that's been done because remember it offsets. Uh, 
if you hit use a positive number, it's going to offset out toward the direction of the mesh. This is the mesh and it would have gone outward. So what I need to do here, I need a cement spacer or a offset between the base and teeth of about 0.3. So I'm gonna go positive 0.3. I'm also going to uncheck connected here. I don't want this connected anymore. So when I uncheck that, it's going to reconfigure and watch this for when it uh, solves this. And you'll see that it looks like it grows outward in every direction by about 0.3 millimeters. Okay, so hopefully you saw that happen there. <clears throat> this has now been grown in all directions by 0.3 and it is not connected. So when this tool applies, the, uh, the offset area is automatically going to be selected like this. So I'm going to accept it. And then don't hit clear selection. We actually want to now go and separate this. So go to edit while it's still selected and separate. And now you'll see both versions. Let's turn off the offset teeth. And you see that these are a little bit smaller. See when I toggle that on and off. So now this would be what we subtract from the original base. So let's go find the base STL. Here it is. Remember, these were your original teeth. That won't subtract. When you got meshes like that, it's just not going to work. But let's look once we've grown it in all dimensions by 0.3. Now you clearly don't have any of those areas of interference anymore. And so this should subtract really easily. So we're ready to do that subtraction, but remember the thing I told you earlier is that solid objects always um, are going to subtract easier. And once again, we've already created some buffer space in this mix, and so I'm not terribly worried about losing a little quality. So before I subtract this, I'm going to go to edit and make solid. I might increase the solid accuracy just a little bit and update it. but that happens pretty quickly and now I'll accept it. Now it, it still keeps your original, okay? These were the original teeth. These are the, I'm sorry, the original offset teeth. And here they are having been made solid. You can see there's not really a significant degradation in the mesh quality. So now we're ready to go ahead and do uh, the subtraction. You've got the opportunity at this point, if there's any areas like, <clears throat> let's say you're making this because the patient broke their denture and you know there's a weak spot. You've got the opportunity right now to come in with sculpting tools. You can smooth things up. For example, I don't love those ledges right there. I'm gonna smooth those. You could inflate areas where it's too thin or deflate. Like I'm looking at that little spot, that could potentially be a problem. So I'm gonna deflate that. Just one click and that's done. Uh, but you know, if you had had a, a weak spot where it broke right through the middle, you know, maybe you go in and you beef that up a little bit. Um, Control Z undoes that. Uh, I've got at this point what I want. My base is nice and smooth. Everything's ready to go. We've got the original interior quality here, and so I'm gonna. Uh, I've got the base selected. Now I just hold Control, select the made solid. 0.3 millimeter offset teeth and just Boolean difference. And there you have it. So I'll accept this. And now you see this looks like a denture base that you're probably accustomed to seeing if you've been 3D printing dentures. Um, this could now be exported. So we could export this, save it as so-and-so's denture base. And then you've got the teeth right here, which are uh, going to also be exported. Export this, save it as whoever's teeth, and print those. Print the teeth in white, print the base in pink, and then I just use some of the uncured pink liquid uh, as the cement between these two uh, and bond these two together. And again, because of the way that we did this, uh, let's look at this in cross section actually. I'm just going to temporarily here combine these just so that I can uh, cut through them simultaneously. All right, do you see the cross section here of what that looks like? Remember, you originally offset the uh, interior of the denture by one millimeter, okay? And so that created this where there was no impingements. And uh, that was going to ensure that we had one millimeter of thickness. But remember, you have to have some cement spacer. And so we took the teeth and we offset them by 0.3. And this spacer here represents that cement gap of 0.3 millimeters 
And because of how we transformed it earlier, it should have a perfect path of draw with no interferences as it goes in. Uh, as you can see here, that's going to be the same regardless of where we go on it. They've all got the same path of draw. So undo that um, and we could separate those back out if you needed to, but that's really the end of the process. And uh, if you look at the models on this picture that I've done, I just did this as proof of concept. So they're both printed in pink. But what you can see here is that we've got the, the teeth, which should have been printed in white, and the base, and they slide directly into one another. You can see here as I turn it over to the internal that we've got a continuous uh, interior to the base. If you needed to reline this, or if when you're bonding the teeth, uh, you know, you don't want cement or resin extruding into the interior, it's all continuous here. So none is going to overflow with that. So I would just take your resin, squirt it into the socket here of the base, and uh, you could use bonding agent, prime them and all that if you want to. But once I've done that, I'll take the teeth and I will squish into this. Any of that uh, resin that is excess and squishes out, I'm just going to take a gloved finger and wipe down the sides of the base and just try to make sure that uh, we get all of that covered and that's simultaneously polishing that. So I hope you found that useful. This is a great way to uh, make new dentures in the case where they have something reasonably good, but the fit's terrible. You could make them a new denture this way. Uh, you could do this as an alternative to a lab reline. You could just print them a new one. You could do backup dentures. Um, there's just a zillion different uh, applications for this where you don't want to necessarily go through the process of designing up from scratch if you're just trying to duplicate something that you already have. Uh, so I hope you found that helpful. Thanks.